Welcome back to the channel. First of all, thank you all so much for watching each of my videos on this subject matter. I know they're long and detailed, but I think it's really important to talk about these issues so that we can really analyze them properly. And thank you all so much for subscribing, particularly my international subscribers, because I want these videos to reach a much more international audience and that it seems to be doing so. Thank you to so many other channels for supporting me. So thank you to you all. So as promised, this is going to be the second video of my detailed analysis and breakdown of the UK judgment and it may even go into three or four or five videos so this is but the second so we'll see how long we go and see how far we get now just to preface this video continuation with the analysis none of this is to say that I am right none of this is to say the judge is wrong this is just yet one humble barrister's point of view on this judgment the evidence how it's being considered whether I think assumptions have been made and inviting you to consider the same so that you can have a sensible discussion a sensible conversation as to what you think of the evidence and the judgment let's get into it so where I left off was talking about the credibility issues of Amber Heard which were ultimately dismissed by the judge. So I'd got to the point in the judgment where Johnny Depp had been referred to as the monster or a Jekyll and Hyde character and that was referenced in the judgment as well. Johnny Depp's response to this was essentially that Amber had just made this up and that she referred to him as this when he disagreed with her. In his evidence, as it's referred to in the judgment at paragraphs 177 and 178, in his evidence, Johnny Depp had said that the monster was a term that was invented by Amber Heard, and this is what she called him if she disagreed with him in the course of their arguments. But as with many other things throughout this judgment, the judge just didn't accept it. At paragraph 186 of the judgment, the judge said, in any event, I do not accept that Miss Heard invented the expression, still less that her use of it as a reason to disbelieve her evidence about her allegations of violence by Mr. Depp. I find that Miss Heard's use of the expression was not, as Mr. Sherborne submitted, an example of retro-engineering. Retro-engineering effectively meaning personalization of something or someone using specific terms, usually in retrospect. And so Mr. Sherborne for Mr. Depp was submitting that this was exactly what she was doing, but the judge didn't accept it. Now, many of you might take issue with the reasoning for this, and I'll give you an example. And again, you can let me know in the comments what you think of it. So at paragraph 184, the judge talks about an email that was sent by Johnny Depp to Elton John with reference to the monster, but the monster, I suggest, and as Johnny Depp indeed suggested, or his lawyers did on his behalf, was a different meaning than the one conveyed by Amber Heard. So paragraph 184, it includes a snippet of this email sent by Johnny Depp to Elton John, which reads as follows. 100 days of clarity for an old reprobate like me. I'm leaving out certain words for YouTube. No one would have believed it possible for a very select few. Most importantly, you. So today I'm celebrating celebrating you. I would have been swallowed up by the monster were it not for you. That is a simple fact. Now as confirmed by the judgment at paragraph 185, Johnny Depp explained that his use of the term the monster in this email was referring to death. In other words, he'd have been swallowed up by the monster were it not for you. In other words, if it wasn't for Elton John, he'd have been dead by now. So reading that back again, let's just take another look. 100 days of clarity for an old reprobate like me. No one would have believed it possible, but very select few, most importantly you. So today I'm celebrating you. I would have been swallowed up by the monster were it not for you. Once again, Johnny Depp's evidence was that he was referring to death in this email and that had it not been for Elton John's support, he would have been. But the judge at paragraph 185 says as follows, and this is the bit that you may take issue with the reasoning on, because whilst he's a judge, it is one person's view and many other people might take a different view. But this is where I referred to the assumptions and inferences came in that I talked about before. So reading out the judge's reasoning at paragraph 185, it reads as follows. Well, that is a possible meaning of that email in isolation. Read in the context of the other evidence, it seemed to me more likely to be a reference to the monster term, which Amber Heard said Johnny Depp himself used to describe his alter ego. And then in the conclusion at paragraph 186, in any event, I do not accept that Amber Heard invented the expression, still less that her use of it as a reason to disbelieve her evidence about her allegations of violence by Johnny Depp. I find that Amber Heard's use of the expression was not, as Mr. Sherborne submitted, an example of retro engineering. So summarizing that, the judge essentially took Amber Heard's word for it but discounted Johnny Depp's evidence 
even though Johnny Depp's evidence was given in court under oath and, as the judge had said elsewhere in the judgment, evidence given under oath should generally be more reliable, which is a very fair point. It should generally be more reliable and should be taken seriously, but again in this case it simply wasn't. In the next section the judge broadly discussed character evidence. Now whilst this was a civil trial, not a criminal trial, the judge did say here that he was going to apply the same general guidelines. In a criminal trial, if someone has a previous good character, it goes in their favour. If they have previous bad character or previous convictions and so on, then obviously it goes against them. So the judge in this section discussed several different events and it's in this section I'd like to bring up one bit in particular. So again, you can make up your mind based on this evidence and based on some observations from me and comparing it with what the judge said in the judgment. And this is of the infamous video poolside where Whitney Henriquez, Amber's sister, was being questioned by friends as to whether or not Amber had beaten her up and then appeared to be inspecting her body for bruises. So I'm going to show you this clip and then make some comments on it so it will be copyright fair dealing for anyone watching. But first I need to explain something. So if an allegation is going to be made and there's a certain person involved, then that allegation will generally need to be put to that person in order to be able to rely on that allegation later. So in other words, if you want to accuse someone of being dishonest, and I'll explain why that's important in a minute, if you want to allege that someone's being dishonest in their evidence, you need to put your nature to them so they can have an opportunity to respond to it. So whether you're addressing a judge or you are addressing a jury in a final speech, for example, you need to have put those allegations to the judge or jury so that you can say, this is what we say happened. You need to put those to the person, to the witness, whose testimony you are trying to discount. And the reason that I say it's important to put the dishonesty allegations to a witness is as follows. That is because in her evidence, Whitney and Enriquez had denied that Amber had ever been violent to her. But of course, this video surfaced, and so to be fair to the judge, he gave permission for the cross-examination to be continued so that this piece of film outtake could be put to Whitney and Enriquez so that she could respond to it. At paragraph 200 of the judgment, the judge confirms that Whitney and Enriquez said that this film did not change her evidence. She said that the filmmakers had been trying to manufacture a story out of nothing. She says it was not the case that she'd had a physical fight with Amber Heard, who had then got the better of her or caused her any injury. So let me show you the clip first, I'll give you some comments on it, and then I'll tell you what the judge said. You do it. Did you get in a fight or something? Oh, <laughs> thank you. <laughs> got into an altercation. Ow. I already talked about it, I don't want to talk about it anymore. I can't believe Amber beat your ass. I know you could beat her ass. We're not going to oh, talk man. about that. Whitney, truth or dare. <laughs> Okay, did you really start the fight with your sister or did she start it? For real, for real, for real. We're not gonna talk about that. She yes. really did I'm whoop your butt. Oh, we're not talking about it. Yeah, I'm done. I guess I'm done talking about it. So in my personal opinion, this video was confirmation that there was, as she put it in this video, an altercation but that she doesn't want to talk about it anymore. One of Whitney's friends saying to her, I can't believe that Amber beat you, was not denied or rebutted by Whitney in this portion of the video. She simply says that she doesn't want to talk about it anymore. Then when pressed as to who started the fight, again, she didn't deny that a fight happened. She didn't say that any one party started it or not. Then again, one of her friends repeated, she really did whoop your butt, as she put it. And again, the response was, we're not going to talk about it. Now, in my view, if they were as friends sitting around poolside having a conversation about this and it was her sister being accused of beating her up, if she hadn't done so, in my opinion, she would have denied it. She would have said, no, that didn't happen, she didn't do that, she wasn't violent and she hasn't hit me. She didn't do any of those things, she simply said she didn't want to talk about it anymore. So those are my views, but coming back to the judgment at the tail end of paragraph 200, the judge says, in my view, the film added nothing of value to the issue of whether Amber Heard had a violent record. So again, there is much more in that section of the judgment, but this was the one that really stood out to me. Because again, as I've said with audio recordings, this was a video and audio recording which does show a real conversation. Now, I do agree with the judge to some extent in that a video recording like that is not crafted questions. They are not rephrased questions under the direction of a judge. They are not necessarily to convey truthful information. It is just a recording. It should be taken for what it is. However, since this case was to be decided on the balance of probabilities, the existence of this video in and of itself and the lack of a denial within that video that her sister had been hitting her or beating her, in my view, on the balance of probabilities, it's more likely than not that she would have denied 
that her sister had been beating her up. And the fact that she didn't do any of those things, she merely said she didn't want to talk about it, it is my view that that probably did happen. And as I say, you can leave me your thoughts and opinions in the comment section below. So in my view, this should have at least had some impact on Amber's credibility to the effect that there's the indication of some violent history there. Although this, it seems, was included and permitted to be cross-examined on so that the judge could then come to the conclusion that it didn't have any weight and didn't take the matter any further. As a final point for this video, we're not nearing the end just yet because this is going to be a lengthy section, but for the final point of this video, I want to contrast two different things. First of all, when the judge has taken evidence about Amber having a quick temper, but concluding that it's not the same as recourse to violence, so in my view making the assumption there that the medical evidence that she has a quick temper doesn't mean that she becomes violent. This assumption imputed to Amber Heard is obviously in her favour but in one of the incidents, incident four, in my view the judge takes the scenario and effectively makes an assumption the other way around. In my personal opinion and with respect to the learned judge he makes an assumption that because Johnny Depp had been in an argument that that became physically violent. So in respect of Amber, at paragraph 203, the judge says there was evidence that Amber Heard could have a quick temper. Thus, for instance, Dr. Connell Cohen, which was the psychotherapist, noted she has insight into her short temper and insecurities. She has no self-soothing techniques other than to engage Johnny Depp in reassurances. And at the tail end of this paragraph, there is, in my view, an assumption on the part of the judge where he says, I accept that shortness of temper is not the same as recourse to violence. But in respect of incident four, bearing in mind what I've said about whether or not the judge made an assumption that one thing led to physical violence, despite the evidence of the people that were there. Let me read this bit through to you and then I promise you this will be the close of this second video. Here we go. So starting at paragraph 239, the re-amended defence, which is what that means, sets out the defendant's case relating to this incident and the re-amended reply, which was a reply to that defence, sets out the claimant's, i.e. Johnny Depp's reply, to the matter stated in this plane journey from Boston to LA. Amber Heard gave her account of this incident in her first witness statement at paragraph 65 to 83, but she was not cross-examined about this incident. Now I think this is somewhat of a difficulty, perhaps it was due to time constraints, but normally, as I said earlier in the video, you must put things in cross-examination to another party if you want to allege that they are wrong or mistaken, or simply you want to put your case to them so that they have an opportunity to respond to it so that you can make submissions on it and it will be considered by the judge. So anyway, Johnny Depp had chartered a private plane to fly him and Amber Heard to LA and this was on the 24th of May 2014. At paragraph 244, Johnny Depp did not recall whether he was under the influence of alcohol and or drugs during the plane journey. However, a text message was sent on the 30th of May, ultimately talking about drinking, etc. the evening before. So suffice to say, in this incident, Amber had said that Johnny Depp had kicked her hard in the back. This was as part of her witness statement. Now this was countered by Stephen Deuters in his evidence and Jerry Judge in his evidence, both of whom were present on the plane. At paragraph 247 of the judgment, it confirms that Mr. Deuters supported the account in the re-amended reply that Johnny Depp had not, during the flight, assaulted Amber Heard. He said that Johnny Depp had never kicked her. The configuration of the seats and tables in the plane would not have allowed him to do so. He says that Johnny Depp may have playfully moved over to tap Miss Heard on the bottom with his shoe, but he was not sure that it even connected. He said that Johnny Depp had been quiet and focusing on his sketching. There was then an exchange of messages whereby Johnny Depp had essentially apologised for behaving badly to Amber Heard. So when he was asked about why he apologised if he'd not behaved badly, he said that he apologised, and this is at 2.52 of the judgment, he apologised because Amber Heard was unresponsive to him. She would not let go of her beliefs and so he used words which she would find pleasing. In closing submissions, Mr. Sherborne for Johnny Depp said that he would not have done this in the presence of Stephen Deuters and Jerry Judge. Bearing in mind that Jerry Judge is Johnny Depp's head of security, so anyone in a position of head of security is going to be hardwired to prevent physical aggression between any parties that they are there to protect. Including, in my view, as a martial arts expert, if Johnny Depp were to try to be aggressive towards anybody else, Jerry Judge would have prevented him from doing so, loyalties or otherwise. But ultimately, the judge discounted both of these two witness testimonies, saying that their loyalties were to Johnny Depp, and therefore essentially didn't believe what they had to say. 
and instead of relying on the witness testimony, relied on the exchange of text messages, which remember, as we've all become familiar with hearsay during the course of these trials, hearsay is anything that is not said in oral evidence, which is supposed to be the truth of a matter stated. So the messages essentially were hearsay, if you want to believe the truth of what is stated within them. However, the two witnesses being in court are not hearsay because they are in court and they are cross-examined. But in this incident, the judge doesn't believe the two witnesses' account, whereas, as I've said previously, the judge does take witness account as against other evidence that's been produced, even though the recordings and the videos do show clearly what happened. They were audio or video recordings of exactly what happened. In my view and in my submission to you watching this, those audio and video recordings are better hearsay evidence than a simple text message, which can be conveyed in a number of different ways. Which is, as it happens, one of the reasons hearsay is said to be less reliable anyway, because to prove the truth of the matter, you need to be able to test the veracity of the contents of that message, scripture, or whatever that hearsay evidence is. Whereas with a video or an audio recording, you can hear it for what it is, you can hear the exchange, but nonetheless, as I said, this is one comparison where the hearsay evidence was taken over and above to witness testimony, whereas in other cases it hasn't been, but only when it was favourable to Amber Heard and not Johnny Depp. So again, before this video becomes far too long, it will need to be broken out into several more videos. Now, just to reiterate, as I did at the beginning of the video, none of this is to say my views are right. None of this is to say the judge is wrong. This is just one possible breakdown by one humble barrister such as myself to give you an opportunity to think about, to comment on this judgment, the evidence, how the evidence was played, how the evidence was considered, and what you think in respect of what's now been heard in the US trial. So I hope you found this interesting. Please do drop a like and subscribe and all that great YouTube stuff. Please do tell your other friends about me if you want to have me on their channels. I was so pleased to be on Popcorn Planet with Andy Signor, and thank you all for introducing me to go onto his channel. So with that, please make sure you subscribe, come back for more, and thank you as always for watching. Watching.